Welcome to the service of morning prayer on the 13th of March, the 2022. This is the second Sunday in Lent. Begin with the announcements, which can be found on our Facebook page or email too. If you'd like more details, please do contact us. Our services follow the usual pattern in person this week and next week. But coming up on the 3rd of April will be a service with Bishop Joanna to officially welcome Madrum and Mirtha into the LMA. This will be held at St. David's Church in Maidrum. It will be the only service in the LMA on that Sunday. So I do hope that you will, will be inclined to join us on that day. Online, our services continue this morning prayer at 9 o'clock, our Sunday Eucharist at 12 via Zoom, Thursday morning prayer, Tuesday weekly message, the Wednesday coffee morning, and cafe church. Please also contact any member of the clergy if you'd like to have any prayer requests, we only like to include names of people that are happy for us to do so. We've also set up a virtual visiting system with members of the clergy, members of the ministry team offering pastoral care by phone. And play again, please do get in touch with us. Just as a reminder that electoral roll forms need to be completed. And thanks also for all who supported the meal at Echa in Therese Church for Maidrum Church. A total of £370 were raised. During Lent, there will be a silent reflection at Maidrum Church on Wednesday evenings at 6.30, led by Reverend Adam Bruce, and this will include prayers for Ukraine. All are welcome. The LMA Lent course, the next session, is at Langine Memorial Hall on Monday the 14th of March at 7 in the evening. There is a simple meal of soup held as well in that. All are welcome. Uh, there's also invitation to the LMA's Curry Night at the Old Board School in High Street St. Clair's, which is on Monday the 21st of March at 7 in the evening, and all proceeds will go to the DEC Ukraine Humanitarian Appeal. It will be £10 per person, raffle on the night. Please have a look for more details on that. Nut and Nata are meeting again in Tlangchloch Church Hall. The next meeting is on the 18th of March. Please do contact Esther, Siren or Esther to, for details on that to book. There will be a retreat day, stepping through date, through Lent, on Friday the 18th of March, from 10.30 to 3pm. You're also welcome to member, join members of the Third Order of the Society of Franc Franciscans as they gather at Christ Church, Carmarthen, on Friday the 25th of March at 12 noon. It's an open meeting where we'll begin with a Franciscan Eucharist and then there's a bring your own packed lunch and there will be tea and coffee and extra cake available. And there'll be plenty of time for chat and discussions. The diocese is also holding a bilingual vocations day on Saturday the 26th of March from 10 to 1.30 in Aberon, Holy Trinity Church Hall. Refresh refreshments are provided. Merith Church are having a bingo evening on Friday the 22nd of April at 7.30 in the evening. The Royal British Legion St. Clair's branch are hoping to decorate part of St. Clair's with knitted or crocheted poppies as part of the branch's 75 years plus anniversary. They are also looking at upcycling plastic bottle, the floral shaped bottoms, to um, cut and decorate them. The workshops have been held at the gate if you are interested. Tankluch Mothers Union are supporting Plant Dewey. They've asked to collect, Plant Dewey's asked them to collect new bibs, new muslin squares and new socks for newborn and six month old babies. Tankluch Church are also continuing to collect items and donations for the Carmarthen Food Bank and the items currently needed are tins of potatoes, carrots, powdered milk, tinned fish, sponge puddings, syrup, chocolate or treacle, long life fruit juice, toothpaste, toothbrushes, shampoo, conditioner and deodorant. Again, all these details can be found either on Facebook or you can have email these notices to you. Do contact us if you'd like to get them. And so we begin our service with a hymn.
the page numbers I'll be using come from Daily Prayer 2009, which is available for purchase, or can be downloaded from the Church in Wales website. If you'd like more information, please ask. I will give two page numbers. The first is for Welsh, followed by the page for English. You are welcome to use the book, or just listen and join in with the parts that are familiar to you. We begin our service at the bottom of page 88 or 89. Jesus said, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Almighty God, you fed your people in the wilderness and guided them by cloud and fire, giving commandments to order their lives. Give us eyes to see your purpose, perseverance to follow where you lead, and courage to know the truth that sets us free, that our lives may be blessed and your will may be done. Blessed are you forever. We turn to the top of page 20 or 21. Let us confess our sins to the Father and seek his pardon and peace. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved others as Christ loved us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy forgive us. Help us to amend our lives, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. We sing to you, O Lord, and bless your name and tell of your salvation. From day to day. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord. All praise to his name. The psalm for this morning is Psalm number 27, which can be found on page 354. Or 355. Psalm 27. You are welcome to join in with me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamped against me, my heart shall not be afraid, and though they rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me, and set me high upon a rock. And now shall he lift up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy upon me and answer me. My heart tells of your word. Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor cast your servant away in displeasure. You have been my helper. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. 
though my father and my mother forsake me, Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of those who lie in wait for me. Deliver me not into the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me and those who breathe out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis, beginning at the 15th chapter. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Esna of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring. And so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look towards heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from the Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these, and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone, and it was dark, a smoking firepot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Canticle, which can be found on page 28 or 29. You are welcome to join in with me. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. 
Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, from the 13th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lent is a time, an opportunity for us to clear out the cupboard. In the case of Shrove Tuesday, the literal food cupboard. And focus on what really matters. Strip things back to their basics. Now granted, in years gone by, this time of the Northern Hemisphere was a lean time. The winter stores would have been running low and the spring crops not yet ready. The practice of fasting may well have been out of necessity to which was then added a spiritual element. Nevertheless, we are still encouraged at this time to reconsider what we do and why we do it. In the Gospel reading for today, Jesus demonstrates a clearness of vision, of mission, that is contrasted to the devious, deceiving, deviousness and murkiness of the machining of the political world of his time. Even in the first few words, debaters raged over whether Herod actually sent the Pharisees to Jesus with the warning, or if they were making it up in an attempt to scare him. Were they genuinely concerned for Jesus, wanting to spare his life? Or did they have another motive for wanting him out of the area? What are their motives? motives? Who sent them? What are they trying to achieve? All of this, in Jesus' response, is irrelevant. He cuts to the chase, if you like, hones in on what they are saying and replies directly to it. His words are offensive, wrapped up in an insult. It's not just a fox, but a female fox, literally a she-fox. Not that the feminine is worse than the masculine, but in the culture of the time, it would have been more offensive. So Jesus clears the clutter and gets to the matter at hand, his mission here on earth. His words have both an immediate practical nature. His journey was going to be three days. He had something in his diary for the next three days, freeing and healing individuals. And they are also a reference to his passion, his ultimate mission for his incarnation, when he would, through his suffering and on the cross, heal and free the whole world. What a relief it can be to know exactly what you are meant to do. While in Dubai I worked in customer support, the kind of job that is never quite done. Yes, you might resolve one query, but was it completely resolved or did the customer just move on? How do you increase customer satisfaction? And when would you know that you've completely increased it? Some days on my drive home, I would see some of the construction work and be envious of the workers that had a clear, specific job or task for the day. Move this pile of sand from here to there. Build a wall right 
here. Clear goals, knowing exactly what you are meant to do. In a perverse way, in Ukraine, they have a very sharp focus on what they need to do. Survive first, you would think. But President Zelensky on Friday said, It's not possible to say how many days it will take to liber liberate our Ukraine land. But it is possible to say that we will do that, because we have achieved already the turning point strategically. We are, not, or we are on the way to our victory. A clear goal, clear mission. Our prayers are with not just the Ukrainian people, but all those caught up in that and other wars. It is an unfair comparison to compare war with Lent, but Lent generally, and this Lent specifically, gives us an opportunity to reassess what is important in our lives, what is important in our faith, an opportunity that, if used effectively, can help us when things really do get tough, in the hard and lonely winter time of our souls. When the weather might be warm and sunny outside, food and fun might be plentiful, when there may ev even be peace everywhere, but inside we are being stretched to breaking point. Please, I urge you to continue this Lent examining your faith and working on it. And yet here is the irony or the contradiction. We need to be very careful of thinking that what we do in Lent matters. The true message of Lent, regardless of what we do or don't do, what we give up or take on, or how successful we are in what we aim to achieve, the true message of Lent is that we can't do it by ourselves. The message of Maundy Thursday needs to be in our minds when we, like those first disciples of Jesus, flee. When we are left with nothing. No Jesus, no faith, and even no hope. On Good Friday, it is Jesus alone who hangs on the cross. On Easter Sunday, we celebrate His resurrection and Him making our faith and hope possible. That is the knowledge that Jesus had in the Gospel reading. He knew His death was coming, yet He was able to keep clear His vision, His mission, for what He knew He had to do. Today, tomorrow, and the next day. This is my prayer for us this week, and for the rest of Lent, that we are able to keep our eyes on Jesus, clear out all that extra stuff, and have courage to face whatever may come, today, tomorrow, the next day, and the days after that. Amen. We turn to page 30 or 31 for an affirmation of faith. And please join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of earth and heaven. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the new covenant which God has made with his people through Christ, let us turn to him in prayer, for he is our God and we are his people. For all Christians, that we may try to discover what the Lord wants of us, and have nothing to do with the futile works of darkness.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Christian preachers, that they may proclaim that the kingdom of God is close at hand, announcing the need to repent and believe the good news. In the Anglican Communion cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Melanesia, its bishops, priests and people. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the staff, volunteers and congregations of the churches of Saron, St. David and Tycross, St. Edmund. We pray for Joanna, our bishop, Dorian, our archdeacon, and our local minister area dean, and all those who minister and worship in our area. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, exchanged the glory of a heavenly throne for the form of a servant, we thank you that you have given Elizabeth our Queen a heart to serve her people and have kept her devoted in the service beyond all those who were before her. We ask you, Lord, to care for her and keep her safe and good health. Encourage us by her example to serve one another and to seek the common good until you call us all to reign with Christ in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who administer justice in our society, that they may do so with wisdom, insight and humility. We pray for the government in Westminster and in Cardiff, that they may act with wisdom and integrity as they make decisions that affect the lives of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are the enemies of the cross of Christ, that they may be transformed and have their hearts and minds raised to heaven and submit to the power of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who experience failure, disappointment, and rejection, that they may set their hearts on the perfection that comes through faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this community of faith created in Christ Jesus, that we may find the fullness of life that God intends for us. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers, for Mildred, Muriel, Jean and Bert, Will, Carwin and Cecil, Peggy, Annetta, Elsie, Adrian and Faye, Jill, Ian, V, Simon, Wendy, Lynette, Ella, Peter, Ron and Jennifer, Liz, Nina, Leslie and David, Liz, Mel, Brian, Marion, Glennis, Helen, Gareth, Sophie and Holly. We remember those who have died and their families. For Don, Kay, Anne and Pauline. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God in heaven, you are our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. We pray for the people of Ukraine, for their community and political leaders. Through your Holy Spirit, guide them at this difficult time. We pray for those institutions and leaders around the world who have the influence to work for peace. We pray also for all people and nations who hold a grievance. Help them to see that talking is the best way forward. We pray this all in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Father, listen to the prayers of your people, which we have made in humility and love, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose again, and who is Lord for ever and ever. 
Amen. We end our prayers praying boldly as our Saviour taught us. I am Tard, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Collect for this the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may reject those things that are contrary to their baptism and follow in the way of Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The following collects can be found on page 38 or 39. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord. To know you is eternal life. To serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, We thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this new day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger, and enable us us in everything to do only what is right in your eyes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the God of mercy transform you by his grace and give you strength to overcome temptation. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all whom you care for, this morning and always. Amen. And so we have a hymn to conclude our time of worship. 